The 85mm f1.4 is known as a must-have lens for every portrait, studio and wedding photographer. But this Nikon 85mm f1.4 G lens is capable of much more and should not be missing in any camera bag in my opinion. The Nikon 85mm f1.4 G lens has been on the market for many years now since its introduction in 2010. This lens looks the same as many Nikon G lenses. This means you have a lot of plastic on the outside, which by the way cannot always be experienced as a disadvantage. At 595 grams the 85mm f1.4 is not light. I myself have no problem with using this lens all day long. With a hood on the lens, this lens starts to look quite imposing. There is only one button on the lens, it gives you the choice between autofocus or manual focus. The lens is quite expensive compared to the 85mm f1.8, but in my opinion it has a lot more to offer. More on that later in this video. The autofocus is reasonably fast on my DA10 and D500, but above all the autofocus is effective. The lens has no noticeable distortion and this distortion completely disappear in post-process. Although some form of color fringing can be observed when the lens is used fully open in exceptional cases. Stopping down the lens a bit does help to prevent this or you can fix this in post-process. The lens has a gold ring, which is Nikon's way to make clear that this is a professional lens. Considering the price, it better be professional. Also, weather sealing joined the party on this lens. Vibration reduction on the other end is missing. An 85mm is pretty much the standard focal length when shooting portraits. This length gives a nice compression of the background and does not give any distortions in the face. The Nikon 85mm f1.4 does a brilliant job here. In addition to a wonderful skin rendering, this lens renders a fantastic bokeh. By the way, a lot better than the 85mm f1.8 from Nikon, which comes across as a bit more nervous. You can beautifully isolate your subjects from the background with the f1.4. The photos displaying a kind of creepiness that is difficult to explain, but which makes this lens so unique. I see the 85mm used very little when shooting flowers. That may be because the shortest focus distance is 85cm. You therefore do not buy this lens as a macro lens. Anyway, when photographing roses and other flowers that are not too small, I like to reach for this lens. Here the quality of the lens comes up again. The soft transition from in focus to out of focus is velvety smooth with this lens. Add to that the beautiful bokeh or blur that this lens conjures up. The photos seem like soft impressionist paintings. When I mount the 85mm on my Nikon D500, I get an equivalent of 127.5 mm due to the crop factor of the APS-C center. It has been known for some time that the D500 is a powerful machine for photographing wildlife. By the way, if you haven't seen my review about the D500 yet, link in the description or above right. The D500 combined with the 85mm f1.4 gives a nice short telephoto lens. And thanks to the fast f1.4 aperture, you still can achieve beautiful results in extremely dark situations. I often shoot in zoos where there is little light. Here the aperture of f1.4 comes in handy and I can keep the ISO values very low. As a result, the colors are reproduced accurately and the photos show a lot of details without noise. I often use these photos in my paintings. An 85mm is the last thing on your mind when doing street photography. 
but due to the slightly greater distance to your subject, you are not noticed as quickly and that is precisely why you get spontaneous photos. The light telephoto range also gives a special effect for street photography. With this fast f1.4 lens you can isolate your subject from the background, but you can still see the context of the environment. What strikes me again and again with the Nikon 85mm f1.4 is that this lens manages to capture the moment so well. Somehow magically this lens generates reality so well, a quality that I don't find in every lens. So if you often do street photography, definitely try out an 85mm lens. An 85mm lens is rarely used for landscapes. A wide-angle lens is often the first thing the landscape photographer grabs. I believe that you can shoot excellent landscapes with this focal length. With an 85mm you have more attention to detail in a landscape and you will get more compression of the background than a wide-angle lens. One thing is for sure. You're going to stand out with your 85mm against all those 24 and 20mm wide-angle shots. I often use this lens to use when I take work-in-progress photos of my paintings as a teaser for my clients. The shallow depth of field allows me to retain a hint of mystery and thus not yet reveal the entire painting. With the extraordinary good color reproduction of this lens, it's an ideal tool for photographing paintings too. In addition to the f1.4 version, there is also an f1.8 version that is a lot cheaper. Although this lens also performs well, this lens lacks the magic and colors that you can display with the f1.4. The 1.8 version did not appeal to me very much. I even tried two copies. In itself there was nothing wrong with the lens, but for me it lacks the, the character in that lens. When I bought the 85 1.4, I immediately knew that this lens appealed to me much more. The lenses I use are situated in a professional context in function of my paintings. This also means, of course, that if I do not or hardly use a lens, it will also be sold. It's not my intention to establish a museum of Nikon lenses, but this lens will definitely remain in my collection. As you can see, an 85mm lens is not only a very good portrait lens, but you can use this lens for different purposes. This Nikon 85mm f1.4 G lens has unique image rendering quality. Beautiful bokeh, colors and sharpness when shooting portraits and other subjects at large apertures. Incredibly ability to bring a sharp subject forward from a velvety, smooth background, giving three-dimensional images. The Nikon 85mm f1.4 G is truly one of Nikon's finest lenses. Despite a relatively high price tag, this lens is a lot better than its cheaper 1.8 sibling. Also compared to the 85mm f1.4 Sigma Art lens, this lens shows much more personality and is not sterile and is also a lot smaller and lighter. Should I lose this lens, I will immediately repurchase it because of its exceptional nature. And now that many Nikon users are switching to Z-mount lenses, there will be probably a lot of interesting F-mount lenses for a lower price on the second-hand market. That's it for this video reviewing the Nikon 85mm f1.4 G lens. I'll look forward to see you in the next one.